Hi, my name is Melanie Jackson and as part of the Read Canadian Books Aloud program and with thanks to the Association of Canadian Book Publishers, I will be reading chapter one to you of my Orca mystery novel for young adults, Tick Tock Terror, which has themes of Edgar Allan Poe, climbing and not being overconfident. So, oh, before I start reading, I should uh, acknowledge that we do have one student with us today um, in the classroom and of course she's six feet away. Hi Beth. <laughs> okay, so chapter one, Tick Tock Terror. Tick, the giant curved blade sliced high into the air. Swung by a steel chain, the blade soared to 140 feet. In the seats at the top of the blade, passengers screamed. They were terrified the ride was going to hurl them into outer space. The blade sliced back down then zoomed its riders up the other side. Talk. All day, every day at the amusement park, the pendulum's loudspeakers blasted out that ominous tick. Then talk, like a countdown to doom, or at least to losing your lunch. I knew the feeling. I'd been on the pendulum, the newest thrill ride at Vancouver's Playland. I'd been on all the rides. Cliff Edge, the climbing gym where I worked, was across the street. I came over on my lunch hours. The pendulum plunged again. It whipped across the sand pit at its base. The sharp, shiny blade missed the body lying face up, chained to the ground by inches. The ride was based on the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Pit and the Pendulum. In the story, set in 1400 Spain, a man gets on the wrong side of the law. As punishment, his torturers swing a blade-edged pendulum over him. The torturers slowly lower the weight closer. At first, the crescent-shaped blade just tickles his chest, then scrapes it, then let's just call it the slice and dice approach to revenge. The body in the sand pit is a dummy, but its face, twisted in agony, is very realistic. So are the bloodstains on its chest. What kind of person would you have to be to dream up a story like that? Edgar Allan must have been one miserable guy. I stopped thinking about Poe and the pendulum. I gazed up at the horizontal bar the chain was swinging from. Two vertical bars supported the horizontal one on either side. At the top, the vertical bars curved together. Towering over the park, the structure looked like a big black upside down U, or like a doorway to the bright blue sky beyond. I heard a hoarse, wavering voice. Think you could climb it? I jumped. Who had said that? Had they guessed what I was thinking? About how great it would be to climb the upside down U up to that horizontal bar, to leave everything behind it so it was just me and endless sky. Because it wasn't enough for me to look up at a building or statue or tree, I had to get to the top, or at least imagine getting to the top. I looked around. I couldn't see anyone paying attention to me. People were chatting, laughing, thinking about their next ride or a giant cone of candy floss. From the tunnel-shaped walkway leading to the pendulum, a laugh cackled out. A bent old man winked at me from a side door. I remembered him. He was the ride attendant who helped people in and out of their seats. I thought he was a bit frail to have a job like that. The old man shuffled up to me. I noticed he was wearing faded red slippers. His badge, curved like the pendulum blade, read Victor Varkin, manager. He stank of cigarette smoke. I remembered that too. I was at Cliff Edge this morning, he said. I saw how you climbed. You were lighter than the air. I had never heard it put like that. I liked it, lighter than the air. Aside from the occasional growl of approval, my boss at Cliff Edge never complimented me that way. He knew I was an ace climber. That's why he hired me for the summer. But he worried about me. He thought I was too confident about my climbing. Stupid confident, he called me. I pushed my boss out of my mind. I started to thank the old man for his compliment, but before I could, he broke into a coughing fit that shook his frail frame. Even his wispy white hair bounced. What had such an unhealthy, out of shape guy been doing at a gym? I couldn't imagine him scrambling up the wall holds. To climb, you had to breathe slowly, steadily, deeply. You had to be fit. Varkin finally stopped coughing. He spat into the grass. Sir, you were a customer at Cliff Edge, I asked. No, Sonny. I went out for a smoke this morning. They won't let me smoke in the park. Eyes on me everywhere, staring, judging. The old man's face was red with rage. With an effort, he calmed down. I passed by Cliff Edge, saw you through the window. 
he lowered his voice and continued, the way you flew up the wall, you're the lad I need. I want to hire you for a one-time secret climbing job. You'll go up the pendulum tonight. When you get to the top, you'll hide a package for me. Victor Varkin stood on red slipper tiptoes. He hissed, $300 cash, no questions asked. I don't even want to know your name. You do it, you forget about it. Interested? If I was smart, I would have walked away right then, but I wasn't smart. I was full of myself. At Cliff Edge, when groups of kids visited, I hammed it up. Scaling the wall, I shouted down to them that I was a climbing fiend. Nobody but nobody else climbs the fiend. The kids laughed, they loved it, but my boss was right about me. I was too confident. I actually did believe I was a climbing fiend, unbeatable, invincible. So trapped by my Mount Everest sized ego, I stood there and listened to Barkin. Besides, I could use the extra money. Some buddies and I hoped to get away for a week in August. We wanted to go camping in Howe Sound, north of Vancouver. We planned to climb the Malamute, the white granite cliff by the water. Wall holds at Cliff Edge and other gyms are fine for practice, but there is nothing like climbing real rock, the sun on you instead of artificial lights, the forever sky instead of a plaster ceiling. The pendulum's tick, tock, snapped me out of my Malibut daydream. I did a mental free fall into reality. Scaling the pendulum would be trespassing. It could get me arrested. Forget it, I said. Barkin sank his bony fingers into my arm. You are afraid to climb? So that's chapter one of TikTok Terror. And um, uh, does anyone have any questions about uh, what you just heard? Oh, I do see a hand. Beth. What's in the mysterious package? Who is the sinister old man? Why does he want to call her to hide the package? Tell me, we're off with your head. Oh. Oh dear, um, in any case, I just wanted to point out one thing that uh, the, in a story, conflict is the lifeblood of the story. Um, and with Connor, you have sort of an inner conflict. He knows he shouldn't trespass, but he's so arrogant, so confident about his climbing. You just have the feeling he's going to make that climb. And then of course, later on, there'll be a conflict between him and the old man who's definitely a bit dodgy, possibly criminal. Um, I guess we'll finish up by asking, um, uh, can someone define conflict for me? Oh, I see another hand. Yes, Beth. When people don't agree on something. That's right, yes. My family has a lot of that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, uh, perhaps we'll, we'll wrap up with that. Thanks, Beth. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed my reading from my book, TikTok Terror, published by Orca Books. Oh, and thanks also to our student, Beth. Beth, oh, but oh, you've forgotten your headgear.